Welcome back. All right, so I opted for the other preview today to talk about the Detroit Red Wings, an old foe of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm old enough to remember the Norris Division in the 80s. Yep, that old. Uh, so the last five seasons for Detroit have been nothing to write home about. So the excitement about this season is really about being relevant late in the season and, and getting that, that shot at being maybe not necessarily a playoff team, but being close, right? They haven't been close for a while. Going back to 2017, 2018, they were 30, 39, and 13. 28th in goals for and 21st in goals against. So whether you're looking for goals or looking to keep the puck out of your net, Detroit was not your team. 2018, 2019, they finished 32, 40, and 10. They were 22nd in goals for and 27th in goals against. 2019, 2020, a season that, honestly, it feels like it was miserable enough I could put it into the awful uh, season playlist. They were 17, 49, and 5. They were 31st in goals for, 31st in goals against. So last in both. Uh, and of course, the pause ended their season mercifully. 2020, 2021, they were 19, 27, and 10, playing in the Central Division. Uh, 30th in goals for and 21st in goals against. So it's been a while since Detroit was really good. But this past season, they flirted with it. 2021, 2022, they were 32, 40, and 10. Same record they had in 2018, 2019. Goals for 25th, goals against 30th overall. But it feels like there's more optimism now than there was back in 2019 when it was clear there was going to be a while needed for this rebuild and they needed some prime young superstars. They're now going to have some prime young superstars both in their lineup currently and coming into their lineup. Uh, their best month was November where they were 7, 6, and 1 and they stayed in it and then they sold at the deadline because they were so far below the playoff line. Uh, March they were three eight and three and again that is after the the trade deadline and so it's understandable they fell off plus I mean guys can see the standings and eventually an 82 game schedule it's it's a long one uh, their exits Sam Gagne Troy Stetcher so both former Canucks Ole Ulevi's a former Canuck as well uh, Mitchell Stevens uh, who didn't didn't quite catch on the way that some other uh, Tampa Bay players have when they've left the Lightning and Thomas Grace who moves on. So, new faces, Andrew Kopp. You know, the funny thing about Kopp to me is that I, I think he's gone from being criminally underrated to now being mildly overrated by some. Uh, getting enamored with the goals and points he had last year, I don't expect him to score at that same rate this season. I think with Kopp, what's, what's attractive with him is you get the hard work every shift and he can play any role in your lineup. So I, I think, honestly that's the reason to, to, to root for Cop. The goals and the assists are a bonus when they come. And again, I'm not expecting as many this year as we saw last year. Uh, David Perron comes in from St. Louis, which is a bit of a shocker because you would think Perron would have retired as a blue, but here we are. Uh, Dominic Kubalik's been added. Ben Sherrod on the blue line. Florida pays a you know pretty stiff price of first-round draft pick for Sherrod. And he moves on. Oli Mata has been added as well. Mark Pesic, who is hurt. So Robert Haig is added as well. And Ville Husso has been added in net. But there's three rookies I put on the board. But I could have put six or seven, really, in all honesty. Uh, Simon Edmondson, to me, looks like he's ready. And may jump right into that blue line. Because the blue line's what's going to be seen as a weakness until we get one of those kids in there. Uh, Jonathan Berggren. Good year for him in Grand Rapids. He, I think he's going to get a look at the NHL level. And Donovan Sobrango, who played in Grand Rapids last year, the offense was, you know, seven points out of however many games. But he he played well enough that I think he may get a look. And it's different than Edvinson. Edvinson's your flashy top four defenseman. Sobranco, at this point, probably better suited to, to fifth and sixth role. And, yeah, we'll see how long it takes before they get in. And again, I, I could have put a lot of a lot of rookies in there. There are others as well. Um, Soderblom comes to mind as one that could very well get a look because he is, he, he's, he's huge. So you at least have to give him a shot. Just stand in front of the net. Just give it a shot. Um, so the tandem in net will be Alex Nadelkovich and Ville Husso. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Huso uh, has another regular season like he did last year in St. Louis, he was good during the regular season, faded towards the end. But if if these guys split the net about 50-50, I think that's pretty good. Down the middle, uh, this is solid, honestly. Dylan Larkin, who I have always said that when 
Detroit becomes a contender, I envision him more as being a second line center. I'm not sure now if that's going to be the case. Uh, they may very well be the wings, do a lot of the scoring. Andrew Kopp, again, these are from uh, Cap Friendly, projected as the number two center. Pia Suter, who there's been, I've seen a lot of Red Wings fans saying, well, Suter's probably on his way out. Well, at this point, he's still there. Uh, so he's likely to number three, and then that'll make Michael Rasmus in the number four. So the channel is, again, seeing between the two channels, the vote's pretty close. 2% on both channels say they will be first or second. I, I love the optimism, if that's what it is, right? You're going to get troll voting, it happens. It's another reason to do this, and then the trolls can have accounts on, on both channels. Thanks for your interaction with both channels, because this all counts as interaction. My uh, interaction numbers have gone through the roof this, this month. Uh, even if view counts haven't, I'm being told, hey, they're interacting with your posts. Well, yeah. Uh, third and fourth place, 17% of the Hockey Channel has said third or fourth place for Detroit. 16% on the other. 65% uh, of this channel voted that they would be fifth or sixth. 70% on the Entertainment Guy. On this channel, 15% still view them as being seventh or eighth. 12% on the other channel. 9,000 plus votes on the Hockey Guy channel for Detroit. Uh, 650 votes on the entertainment guy. So again, the the difference in the number of votes is huge, but the percentage still comes out to pretty darn near the same. And I like that. Now there's Stanley Cup odds. They're not winning. So plus 6,000, you, you could make it a million, but don't make it a million. Don't, because bad things can happen if you make it a million and suddenly you lose. Uh, but yeah, and, and I say that to the odds makers. If you ever see a plus million, you just, just throw, throw a couple bucks on that because sure um so cap space they have cap space nine million two hundred and forty six thousand one hundred and eleven according to cap friendly and that's all dollars that's us dollars that's cap space they are one of the few teams in the national hockey league with cap space though philip zadina is still listed as unsigned i'm going to go out on a limb and say he's not going to get a nine million dollar a year extension so i know dramatic right there's a prediction for you uh, the top four on defense, uh, Ben Sherratt, likely to play with Maurice Sider. Sider is a superstar. I expect Sider to, to, to score at an even higher rate this year than last year. And it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Ole Mata and Philip Peronik, likely the top four as well. But on the left side, where you see Sherratt and Mata, and if you're thinking, well, that's not that, not that deep on the left side. Yeah, uh, Edmondson is a left-handed defenseman. So is Sobrango. So it is possible that Detroit looks at one or the other, maybe both, and says we want to give these guys a look in training. Hey, look at training camp. They look good. Give them a preseason game or two. Hey, they look pretty good in the preseason. Well, we're going to roll with them into the season. Maybe that happens. Uh, I would think Edvinson, I would say 70-30, I would put the odds that he will make it onto the roster at least to start the season. But uh, Edvinson looks like he's going to be the next big thing. We saw Cider. We've seen Raymond. And now we're going to see Edvinson. And maybe Berggren ends up turning some heads as well as a rookie. So their coach is going to be Derek Lalonde. He has a clean slate. And so do a lot of the players on this team. Steve Eiserman, the general manager, people absolutely enamored with, with Eiserman. On the breakthrough candidates, I put a couple of guys because, honestly, I, I can't put Cider or Raymond. They've already broken through. They've already had great seasons in their rookie years. So Joe Valeno... If he's gonna if he's gonna do it, this has to be the year, uh, honestly. Because if Valeno doesn't stand out, he he could end up in Grand Rapids. Uh, just just by the numbers game alone, uh, it may end up being tough for Valeno to make this team. Uh, or and and I understand too that would like I would think he's he's qualified for waivers now, and I don't know that he would clear waivers to go down. Uh, and again, Philip Zadina is unsigned. He he has to either either Zadina breaks through. Uh, once he's got a contract from Detroit, or it's probably probably done for him. So we shall see. Uh, the leader in goals this past season was Dylan Larkin with 31. Tyler Bertuzzi was second with 30. Assists, the leader was Maurice Sider with 43. Uh, Dylan Larkin had 38. So the overall scoring numbers, not fantastic, but those should improve as the team improves, and I would think Raymond will probably be the leading scorer. Raymond had an excellent first half of the season, tailed off in the second half of the season. That kind of a wall can happen. With European players, it makes some sense. Their, their schedules are a little bit shorter. Also, with junior age players, when they come in and they make an NHL team right out of the gate, yeah, NHL travel is tough. Even with all the modern amenities and all the 
the pampering that players that get that people talk about, uh, it is still it's a long season and it can be rough. Uh, special teams, not special. 16.3% on the power play, 73.6% on the penalty kill. You add those two numbers together, you get 90.1%. So that's something that Detroit absolutely has to improve. New coaching could help with that. And Eiserman's additions could help. I'm looking at Cop, who can absolutely be a solid penalty killer. Perron can help the power play. Uh, Sherratt can be used as a penalty killer as well. And so could Haig. And don't be surprised when rookies get that opportunity as well. So, expiring contracts, there are a lot. Headlined by Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi. Yeah, these guys are both up this year. This is where for Steve Eiserman, who now we understand, you know, all the trades and everything, everything he's done with, with Detroit's worked out pretty darn well. Now we get to see what that vision looks like for the, the length of contracts that these guys are going to get, what the money's going to look like, and, and how that's going to work out. Uh, Pia Suter, also an expiring contract. Oscar Sundquist, Adam Ernie, um, Ole Mata, Jordan Osterley, Jake Wallman. Uh, Mark Pesic, Alex Nedeljkovic. So you've got a goaltender in a contract year. That can be a very good thing for a team. And Robert Haig. That being said, I would expect Nedeljkovic, Bertuzzi, and Larkin to all end up sitting down soon. I would think if they're not already trying to negotiate extensions and find out how that works and, and make sure that management and the players are on the same page when it comes to term and money and then go from there. And by same page, I just mean in the same neighborhood, same solar system. Sometimes what the player wants and what the team's offering, nowhere near. Uh, could be term, could be money, could be both. So we'll see how things work out for Detroit. But the optimism is there. I agree with it. This is a team that could absolutely jump in. Uh, I kind of agree with people who think, you know, they could end up being third or fourth. A lot of things have to bounce their way. The rookies have to come in and play spectacular. We have to see that in increased improvement from guys like Raymond, from Cider, because while they, they have had great rookie seasons, their their continued ascension is necessary for this team to contend for a playoff spot this year. We'll see whether or not they do it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below regarding the Detroit Red Wings. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.